The Russia-Georgia war, which erupted as a battle for a disputed breakaway region, has fast spilled over into surrounding areas. Who are the likely winners and losers in this conflict, and who has the power to end it? This is Inside Story. I'm Lauren Taylor. A possible domino effect as events move rapidly in the confrontations between Georgia and Russia. Neighboring Ukraine has warned that it may bar Russian ships from returning to their base in Ukraine. And the U.S. has spoken of the potential for significant impact on U.S.-Russian relations. Jonah Hull has this report. On the road to the border and south of Setia. Early on Saturday morning, Georgia began its withdrawal from the capital, Skinvali. This, one of the retreating convoys, now well inside Georgia. But was this a retreat or a repositioning? The Georgians say Russia is massing troops and armor on the border 35 kilometers to the north. New Georgian positions that we saw on the road looked defensive, preparing perhaps for a Russian advance into Georgia itself. The situation in Skinvali remains uncertain, but very close by in the neighboring separatist region of Abkhazia, there are worrying developments. Abkhaz fighters supported by Russia are on the move, widening their area of control. Strategic Georgian positions have been attacked here, and the Russians are said to have landed 4,000 troops delivered by its Black Sea naval fleet. Georgia says 6,000 more are on the ground elsewhere, preparing for a full-scale invasion. In Gori, the town that saw the heaviest of Russia's aerial assault on Georgian military targets on Saturday, people are leaving fast. Uh, we are leaving our village because we, we are expecting that the Russian will attack us. They are bombing us. And we are going to go to the village and go to another country. Are you afraid? Yes. Yes, very, very. This is a chess club in the town of Gori. The pieces are all laid out, but there's nobody playing. Why? Because this is a building like many others in Gori that felt the effect of Saturday's Russian aerial assault. For all practical purposes now, this is a town in which normal civilian life has ceased to exist. Thousands of ethnic Ossetians have left South Ossetia for Russia. In Georgia, people are heading for the capital, Tbilisi. Right now, there's no guarantee of safety anywhere in Georgia. Jonah Hull for Inside Story in Gori. Well, joining us now are our guests in Moscow, Pavel Felgenhauer. He's a defense analyst and columnist for the Novaya Gazeta newspaper. In Paris, Nino Kertadze. She's a Georgian filmmaker and a former presidential advisor. And in Washington, D.C., Richard Weiss. He's the associate director of the Hudson Institute's Center for Future Security Strategies and an expert on U.S. policy towards Eurasia. If I go to Paris first and Nino Kertadze, do you think this was a, a big miscalculation by Georgia? Um, hello. You know, I don't know uh, exactly what how it all started, but I don't know. I don't. Uh, I don't know whether it was any calculation at all. But the only thing that I know, because I've been speaking constantly to uh, to my parents who live in Georgia, to all my friends are there, that now nobody knows where it's going to end because the reaction that the Russians had was totally out of control and totally dis disproportional. So, uh, I mean, my main worries are, are this now. I don't know, again, to, to, to come back to your question, whether it was miscalculation or what it exactly was, because now it's very difficult to say who started what and Basically, I was in Paris and not there, so, you know. Pa Pavel Felgenhauer, do you think this, uh, the reaction is, do you think the reaction, uh, as Nino said, said there, it was disproportionate? No, I don't really think that there was a real big uh, possibility uh, that Russia would just simply uh, move out and allow uh, Georgia to settle its problems as, uh, with Ossetia uh, just simply by using force and routing the Ossetians. Uh, I also believe that the conflict was basically inevitable and it would have happened anyway, no matter who moved, and most likely the Georgian uh, the leadership and Saakashvili and his military advisors decided to move first to have the advantage of the initiative. 
uh, and to put Russia into a kind of a, a rather perplexed situation because this uh, war was coming up. It was basically pre-planned, uh, though. And so, but, so, but the Georgians apparently uh, mixed the cards a bit for the Russians. Okay, Richard Vines, what's your view? Do you think it was inevitable this conflict, as uh, our guest suggests? Uh, yes, I have to agree with that interpretation. I think that insofar as the there, this has been going on for a decade now, there are various negotiating platforms, there have been various mechanisms to try and uh, spur progress, and there really wasn't any, there wasn't much movement in the diplomatic front. And so I think it was just a question of some spark to set off the conflict. Uh, and it's, I agree with our first speaker, it's unclear what started it, but certainly the, the events that follow were fairly predictable. So why do, you think, why do you think that Russia is doing this? I mean, is the aim ultimately to destabilize Georgia and it was Russia was spoiling for a fight and this was the opportunity to, to do something like this? Um, I don't think Russia was spoiling for a fight uh, because I think if you look at the, the last week, the Russian response was a bit uh, delayed. I think they were caught off guard like the rest of us to the escalation. Um, I do think, though, at this point, Russia has decided that it makes sense to try and uh, settle the conflict more or less on a longer-term basis by solidifying its control over South Ossetia, driving the Georgians out of Abkhazia, uh, conducting military operations elsewhere in Georgia to degrade the strength of the, Rus the, the Georgian military, and ideally convince the West not to let Georgia into NATO. Uh, many of the Europeans and, uh, have been expressed concern that bringing G Georgia into the alliance uh, would actually drag them into a war with Russia, and I think this is going to reinforce those fears. Okay, so I think Russia's response is strategically planned and well thought out, uh, if regrettable. Okay. Nino Katadze, on that point about uh, NATO membership, will Georgia now be thinking, well, actually, we haven't had any help or assistance from our friends in the West on this occasion? Perhaps. NATO membership wouldn't be such a brilliant idea after all. You know, um, now people are really worried and they're all wor in front of their televisions trying to understand what's going to be international reaction because everybody is hoping that this is the only thing that can possibly stop Russia of going further. But uh, coming back to NATO, I think that if uh, Russia were to be just obedient to, if Georgia was to be obedient to Russia, uh, we will never be there, actually. I mean, uh, Saakashvili's government irritates Russia because they're pro-Western because they want to get into NATO and basically they don't want to see these old colonies to, to slip away. So that's, uh, that's the one way of explaining why Russia is uh, so angry and so, I mean, uh, why, why, sh uh, why it is using such methods now. Uh, another, on another hand, what, what Georgia is going to do, I mean, certainly after all that had happened, and if you look closely to Russian and Georgian relationship, they've been deteriorating for these last uh, seven, ten years. Uh, it's getting worse and worse. So I don't think that uh, Georgians will go back to be with Russia and accept this big neighbor and just be obedient. So they, they will try still to go to NATO because in somehow this for Georgia means to stop these kind of things happening okay. uh, in our territory, you know. But let me just bring in Pavel uh, Felgenhauer on that point. What, do you think uh, Russia's aim with a, such a sort of strong military action was to send a message not just to its neighbors but also a bigger international message about uh, Russia's power? Well, sure we, uh, but I mean uh, uh, on different levels uh, there were different objectives. Uh, the Ossetian and Abkhaz separatists uh, believe that a conflict in which Russia is going to be fighting on their side will mean that Russia will recognize their sovereignty and solve their problems. And, wi um, and will uh, it? There are Russians who believe that we should kind of begin rebuilding the empire through by uh, annexing these small uh, separatist republics. There are people in Georgia who believe that uh, Georgia have a fine military and can actually use it now to solve uh, some problems. So there's lots of, on different levels, but in, on the top level in Moscow, of course, uh, the different kind of quarrels between Georgians, the Sitians, Abkhazas, and other small Caucasian tribes are not that important. There's a lot of personal enmity right, between 
former president, now prime minister, the strong man in Moscow, Vladimir Putin, and uh, uh, Georgian president, Mikhail Saakashvili. But for the top leadership in the Kremlin, in Moscow, the main problem is NATO uh, expansion, uh, Georgia becoming part of NATO. For them, that's the main reason. Okay, Richard Weiss, if I could bring you in, this whole point about uh, NATO and what uh, it might, how it might expand. I mean, do you think? I mean, it's been a very clear message from the United States that they're not going to get involved in this, and the international um, community doesn't seem to be particularly keen on getting involved in this dispute at all. So, where does that leave the relationship between a country like Georgia and the U.S., which is supposed to be an ally? Um, I think that it's going to lead to deterioration in the relationship, and I think that was that's probably one of Russia's ideal objectives uh, on, on several levels. One, I think the uh, campaign to bring Georgia into NATO is going to weaken even in Washington. Two, uh, there are many people in Washington who think that the blame the Georgian leadership in part for what's happened. There is a a sense that, that the current president and his entourage miscalculate how much support they're going to get from the West and perhaps try to uh, undertake a military coup de main, seize the territory and present the world with a fait accompli. Um, and that's going to make people more reserved about backing his entry into NATO. Uh, in addition, the Georgians have, have uh, now recalled their troops from Iraq. And uh, in the long term, that was seen as a mechanism I wish to, to strengthen the military alliance. So I think uh, within limits, I mean, the relationship will always remain strong, but I think that the current very high level relationship will deteriorate somewhat. I think there's been new sources of tension introduced into the relationship. Okay, we're going to take a very quick break. Could do all of you stay with us? And when we come back, we're taking a closer, closer look at the turbulent history of South Ossetia and its relations with its neighbors. Do stay with us.